Greetings and welcome everybody to the Jane Live Miracle Medicine on a Thursday where we talk about case studies, leading edge nutrients, breakthrough treatments and really awaken everybody to the much higher living life, the life force, um, which is our energy, which is our currency behind everything that we do. And to the best of my ability, I try to sort of demystify the, the myths and debunk the, the distortion. So welcome here. We are again on a Thursday today. We're talking about um, the orders of love. We're talking about are you sick and tired of feeling sick and tired? And we are delving beyond the physical. I mean, we are getting to the root cause of dis-ease, disorder, degeneration beyond the physical. And this indeed is an, an, the place where we find the root cause of the disease and the disorder. And, um, you know, it's interesting because people are really, really keen to swerve this area. I don't need that, Jane. I don't need the emotional stuff. I've done it all. I get people coming and I've done it all. And I say, yuck. Well, I just think that once we've done it all, we're walking on water. So let's see, you know, what little remnant of emotional um, area is there that still hasn't been resolved. And we, true, true enough, we'll find something. So personally, I've probably done about 50 how sessions. I've done hundreds and hundreds of processing um, of, um, sessions in my life. And, you know, I think my main aim is to you know, discover as much about myself as I can before I leave, not waste any moments. Um, understand that everybody that I interact with, in some way, if there's a button that's been pressed, they're there to teach me something. It's not about them. It's not their fault. It's not about blame. It's why did I react? Let me understand, you know, what this is all about. Let me go into the deepest feeling let me come out of it understanding what happened and what I gained from it what I learned from it and once you do that the emotions dissolved so I think the most important thing um, when we're talking about um, emotions and so on is to own the disorder own the disease own the degeneration own your disease um, it's the body speaking to you. It's the way of communicating to you. And how often do we ignore it? The knees sore, the legs are sore, you feel a bit of heartburn, the shoulders are sore, the neck sore, got a headache, got constipation. We just flat out ignore it. Sometimes we go and get an allopathic medicine, which takes the symptoms away. And all that really does is it just shifts the illness deeper into degeneration, only to appear in another another place in the way of a lung disorder, a skin disorder, a liver disorder. And as we keep smothering and trying to smother the symptoms, the disease gets deeper into us and gets more pervasive and more serious. So, um, you know, we, we're dealing with a world where 25% of the population in America is on three or more prescribed medications. You know, and that's really, really um, chronic. That's really chronic. Um, and who wants to be that? Now, why is it that people can't give up the medications, can't give up the antidepressants, can't give up um, their, their lifestyle? And, you know, it's because basically um, – we're not getting to the root cause of the problem. We're not getting to that emotion. So the, the body speaking to us is an awakening that we're ignoring. And on top of that, we're ignoring the root cause. So at the 365 Healthy Bar Center in Branson, where we work, it's our global center. It's a virtual center, 24-hour, 24-7 uh, um, link up, hook up to our quantum devices, the QUEXED, which was formerly the SCIO. Um, you know, we do live blood analysis. If you're not here, we'll do it on the quantum um, QUEX device as well. So we full on into analysis, determining your health risk factors, determining the root causes of disease, and then defining a, a, a way forward 
that you are responsible for. Because you are responsible for your situation. Every single bit of it, 100% of it. You invited it, you created it, it's there for you. It's there for you to learn and understand and move on. So um, I always explain to people when we come to earth, we're perfect. We collide with the genetics, the family ancestry, the epigenetics. We live in an environment. We undergo and experience traumas. And from there, we then live our life. Now, these traumas and this experience is when we're colliding with the genetics and so on. When we little, we form a mental construct. Men always do this. I need to be perfect because if... When I was small and I dropped the glass, I got a hiding in front of everybody. Therefore, I can't afford to drop anything. Any ball can't be dropped. I have to be perfect for the rest of my life. And it, this just brings in neuroses. It brings in a complicated life. It brings in a life of perf someone striving for perfection that's never going to happen. You beat yourself up all the time. And what's more, you actually set up situations where there will be imperfection. So that you can say to your brain, your upper brain, there you go. See, per perfection. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Or men keep doing this. Or um, when I go on holiday, that happens. Um, when I eat this food, that happens. So we form the story. We live it. We repeat it. And it becomes almost our, our gospel. And what we need to do is we need to dispel that. Because... It's a, um, a, a false reality. It's not a real reality. It's not the reality you were born with. So instead of somebody helping us through these stages when we are young, we form this construct and we live it, which is false, and we basically make ourselves sick. Um, we get hundreds of people coming in. And um, a classic example was yesterday. Um, a lady arrived here. She was thinner than a concentration camp victim. She can't remember when she last ate. She came on her own f from a, an hour and a half away on an Uber. We carried her into our um, chronic disease clinic. We put her on an oxygen drip immediately, um, started reviving her. A long story short, she walked out after three hours and got into another Uber, but she was she was actually fine, but she was a cancer a cancer patient. It had started in the cervix, it had metastasized to the lungs, to pneumonia. She was in intensive intense pain when she came. When she left, she was out of pain and it only got better in the afternoon. However, chatting to her, I said to her, you know, what is eating you? Let's discuss what's eating you so that we can start clearing this no no nothing jane you know i'm fine it, no nothing and i said to her it can't be i said this is the way of your body speaking to you let's let's define the real problem long story short she's really angry with the child's father because he's never paid the school fees the child's now 17 in the last year and come the end of the year, if the fees aren't paid, the child doesn't get the report and the child doesn't um, uh, um, graduate to the next class. So for every year, she's been angry, angry, angry. It's gone in her head, angry, angry, angry. And um, she's got herself ill. And this is what we do. So it will be sadness, moving to anxiety, moving to depression, moving to illness on some level. It can be autoimmune, it can be algae, pain, inflammation, it can be cancer, it can be severe liver disorder, kidney disorders, infections, and so on. So we processed. We did the process called HOW, which is our Holistic Ancestral Orientation Program, where we bring in the players yourself, your mother, your father, your grannies, your grandfather, etc. right here and now in my consulting room and we start speaking and we start understanding and we're getting to the root cause of the, um, the problem. And when we start tracing it backwards, we find who else had the lung problem. So we find also that 
the person standing with me, the client, is holding molecules of granny who also had a lung infection, who also had lung cancer or whatever, or the great-grandfather who had the asthma. So we're carrying these molecules. They're not only our, our body molecules. We're carrying the memory, the DNA, which is in the blood, which we pass, mothers pass on generation after generation. We're carrying the hereditary molecules, the hereditary emotions, experiences, memories. And our job is to understand what's happening, share, uh, uh, give the memories back, give the fate back to whoever it belongs to and live a free life in, in, in honor of our ancestors, of course. And in this way, the patients feel the peace, they feel tranquility, they feel joy, they feel some of them unconditional love. Their, their body part that was pulling in the beginning is no longer pulling anymore. They're feeling taller. They are genuinely at peace, genuinely relaxed, genuinely, genuinely relieved. And that is the that is the beginning and the end point because they know they've shifted. Now we're talking about a quantum shift, what happens like that. The universe wastes no time. So we're speaking in the in the, the big universal field of wisdom. That's where we're operating. I'm facilitating really very much in the background. And you or the patient would be in the dialogue, telling, telling us what's going on. Sometimes it will go as far back as a war. It will might go back as far as um, a fire. Um, the house burnt down. Um, there was a flood. Um, there was a shootout. Um, it was extremely cold and there was snow. So, so we sometimes, uh, the person relives that and um, they know it and they're really, really unstable and they can feel, um, you know, that things are not uh, um, okay for them. Anyway, we, 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 we dissect it, we dissolve it and we bring it all back to present. So that is really the function of the holistic ancestral orientation. You've all seen this advert a few times, I think, already. But um, it starts off, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you living the life you came to live? And I think that's most important because time is speeding up. I mean, we are now towards the end of February. And we're already going to be moving into March. And before we know it, it will be June. And it will feel like a month has gone by. And it's just speeding up and speeding up. The time for healing and clearing is now if it's never been before. People are coming in and spontaneously cleansing, spontaneously healing. And this method brings it through very, very quickly. It is, it's a method that I found that I'm certified in now that I'm getting amazing results. In fact, the poster sits on my desk because I say to the clients, I can line my desk with 4,000 products, if you like, the most expensive, imported, you name it, products. But if we don't drill down and get to the emotional cause, we're failing. We're just putting plasters on. So when people say they get to the root cause, we're not talking physical here. Yes, we are, because it will be the root cause, the root organ, the lungs. Then we've got to find that emotion that's linked to the sadness. So lungs will be sadness, liver will be anger, heart will be hatred, kidney will be fear, for example. And we, this is how we start resolving. Everybody knows the issue some people sit here, let's take cancer, for example. I had a lady today. And I said to her, also, what's eating? You know, she doesn't know. No, nothing. No, no, nothing. She's fine. And then I'd run the assessment with my quantum machine. And it's off the charts on the emotional side. And I say to her, but there's got to be something um, eating you. Your subconscious is telling me. Another client, maybe my smaller quantum 450, it's telling us the sentiment index is high. So I said to her, well, well, you know, go and think about it. But I also said to her, until we remove that, she can go to 50 different cancer centers, cancer practitioners, and all she's doing is juggling balls in the air because she's not going to get healed. So let's just talk about cancer as we're doing. Now, 
people will come to me <coughs> and sort of spread like wildfire. So there'll be a center somewhere where somebody discovers Jane McKenzie and they come to me and I give them a fresh lease on everything. Everything I'm doing is pro-life. It's pro-building life force, our energy currency. It's clearing the brain. It's clearing the organs. It's um, increasing imagination, inspiration, intuition, getting you to know more about yourself, which is 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 the how in it in itself because you're reconnecting with your true self. So they they like this because they've been knocked and hammered by chemo and radiation and everything else that goes with it the, with it the nausea and and vomiting and and. Um, you know, um, lack of appetite and so on. And suddenly now they're filled with enthusiasm. They're feeling hungry. They're getting better. I'm getting the parasites out. I'm getting the heavy metals and the toxins and so on out. And then everybody starts coming. And I just say to them, whoa, you know what? Um, this is your responsibility. I'm not going to heal you. You're going to heal you. Physician, heal thyself. You know how to do it. I will educate. I will help your body clear, clear on a physical level and we'll do the emotional work. No, but I know all of that. And I say, yeah, but until that's happened, like I've just said, you can go to any number of practitioners, any number of centers, by the way. The people that go into remission, remission means that the cancer is less than the size of a peanut not detectable beyond the size of a peanut. That does not mean it's gone, but they call it remission. Just to tell you all, all right? 2% of people going to remission. Of those 2%, I don't know the exact percentage, but it comes back. The people where it doesn't come back are those people that sat back took self-responsibility and worked through self-transformation, gave up what was worrying them, decided it no longer served them, understood that it was making them ill. And until they gave it up, they were going to continue to get ill on a quite a rapid downward spiral, by the way. I think that the um, the COVID and the vaccinations and PCR tests, et cetera, have actually speeded up the um, the pace at which dis-ease in the body occurs. Anyhow, be that as it may, um, it's, it's, it's absolutely vitally, critically important to remove the emotion. Then once you do it, my gosh, you feel so free. You just feel so free. You, you felt the peace that you've always wanted to. And, you know, this goes on hand in hand with time to sit in the sun, time to put your feet on the earth, time to breathe, do the breathing exercises, empty the mind out, hydrate yourself, eat properly. Um, and the more you do that, the more you want to clear, the purer you become, the higher your frequency, the lighter you are, the more self-discovery can happen, the more self-transformation happens. And... You just gear yourself up for, for high levels of purity and self-discovery. And that's what this is about. So the how is the way, is a way, is though I know it's almost the way to do it. I would forgo as far as saying, because anyone can do it. There's no rules, there's no there's no script. Um, and as I said, I've done many, but in terms of speed, it's amazing. Um, so on the advert, it says that we're uncovering past deep emotional traumas. We will find it. I mean, the one lady was stuck <laughs> for about 20 minutes. She was stuck. And she suddenly went straight into unconditional love. So to go from stuckness to unconditional love is major. But we persisted, we persisted, we persisted. And she suddenly, suddenly. We triggered a memory. She said, Jane, I can't get any memories. I don't ever find memories. I waited, I waited, I waited. We found the memory and she released. It was so amazing. Um, and every one of them is amazing, by the way. What, 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 I, um, I'm holding the space for you. You teaching me at the same time. And, you know, it's, it's massive sharing because remember, all our particles, we are particles, moving particles in dynamic motion, and we're all interlinked. 
So what's my problem is also yours and you can relate and it's it's all shared. So the clearing is the clearing on a much bigger universal level anyway. So we end up reducing the anxieties, the griefs, the sadnesses, the hatreds, the fears. And the body starts healing spontaneously. And I've got many, many, many life, uh, uh, case studies. Um, we build the life force and it's, it's through this inner alchemy where we're transforming the nonsense into gold, for example. Restoring the health, the well-being and our happiness and um, that's done physically, neurologically, emotionally, and spiritually. And, and people say to me, you know, I've never felt this way before. I've never looked at the problem this way. Um, you know, wow, Jane, that was amazing, for example. And um, this is our way forward. This is the way. Because then we can start also making sense of the world. Because we've gone inwards. All too many people look externally and go to all of the various health professions to try and get help and so on and, 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 and buy all these expensive products all day long. The healing is within you. Those cancer remission people are the ones who went inside, regardless of what treatment they were doing. Please understand, key, the chemos and radiations, there's a 2% remission where they can they, where anything that existing is less than a pea size because the machine can't find that. It doesn't mean it's gone. Then it comes back and there's any number of one excuses, another million rand thrown at the problem. And the million rand start increasing and the body starts deteriorating very badly. So the choice is yours. The choice is ours. We know how to do it. Um, the, the, the case studies are amazing. Um, the, the coincidences, the occurrences, um, it's just astounding. It's absolutely astounding work. That's all I can say. I uh, see there's a question there. Uh, let me see what it's saying to me. Where do we learn? Can I teach you this? Uh, I mean, where do we... How, where do we learn? I mean, to help our client. That's common. So common, yeah, I think the, the first step there would be to do a couple of these yourself, to understand um, what it is, what we're doing. And once we've done a couple and you've cleared, um, uh, quite, you know, a few on your side as well, it'll be far easier to understand the process and then we can get a group together quite easily Um and we can work through how to do this. It's not difficult. Um, there are very, very many orders of love. So let me take you through some examples. Um, some children are given away at birth or halfway through. Some of the, some are adopted, and the other children stayed with them with the mother. For example, it reminds me of a case study, which I'll repeat. Um, some people, um, their father never saw them. The father was working all the time, or the mother, doesn't matter who, never saw them. Um, others were born after the sibling before them was aborted. So they're born into a womb where not so happy because the child before was aborted and maybe they feel a bit insecure, that child, and that child will be insecure the rest of their life. Um, maybe there was rape, maybe there was alcoholism, um, maybe there was a war. The grandfather was killed in a war and you carrying those molecules. Um, the parents divorced. Someone had an affair. You should have married your first love. Things like this. And these create... Um, the mental constructs in our life, which we live with. And it creates all sorts of disease, disorders, infections, parasites, attracts all sorts of things in the body. Um, it wears us down, basically. And then you understand two people together. There's a squabble. No one can, un neither party can understand the other party. But, but something triggered one of the parties 
to remember something in the past, either their past or their ancestors' past, which caused them to blurt out or whatever. The other parties here, quite neutral, not knowing anything about it, not knowing what they did or they didn't do, maybe they did nothing, and there was just a trigger point on this side, and then there's a squabble, and nobody knows what the squabble's about. And I've got case studies about this. I mean, the one man came to me, He's got prostate cancer. And oh, this is a true story. So the stories that I get told will make your hair stand up on end. So his father told him that you only marry a virgin. Okay, be that as it may. So he didn't know what basically making love was all about. And he found his first true love. And it was all a big mess up. And... Anyway, he found out in any event she wasn't a virgin, so he, he dumped her because father had said you only marry a virgin, right? So then he found this wife that he did marry who lied to him and told him that she was a virgin, right? Okay, she wasn't. So anyhow, this is how the story goes. Being the man that he is and, and having been tainted by what his father told him, he, he set to work to organize the structure of the family, do do. Um, build, it, build the business and everything and never really paid attention to anything other than that. So the wife strays because she's also not being um, looked at. And she has two affairs, one with his best friend and another man. But she doesn't tell him. Because he's so busy, he doesn't know. So New Year's Eve 2021, she tells him. Okay, and that could have gone other way. But because this man has put in a lot of work and he's done a lot of self evolvement, self transformation, and all the rest of it, he plays his life back. And he's and he and he self discovery. Oh my word, look at this. And he thinks about his first love and he thinks about this. And he, as I said, he could have gone other way. And he thinks, no, this is this is let me let me work with this in um in a mature, holistic way. And he realizes that, the, you know, part of it, he, what, what he has to do himself, what the learning for him is and how it all happened. And as a result, turn the relationship around and they have the, the most unified relationship. Prior to her having tell, telling him, there were squabbles. He told me, see, Jan, I never knew what they were about. He said, I never knew. There are no more squabbles. So can you see, I'm just using one example here, how we can live this life in this partnership, both, you know, on, on often uh, on opposite sides of the fence and not knowing what the squabbles are about. But this one's playing out their mental construct. This one's playing out their mental construct. Nobody understands, least of, all, least of all the people. And then it becomes blame. And then, it, you know, the relationship can go any way. So without realizing that the people we attract into our life were there to teach us, be it in a negative, horrible way or, or in, a, in a positive way. So um, the outcome is always our learning. And the example I gave you, this gentleman took the mature route and he learned and my goodness, the universe opened up and he's got basically a whole new relationship with his wife. And it's just awesome. So uh, the other case study I was thinking about um, is, is two, two days ago or so, a lady. A lot of my work is also virtual, by the way, because people are all over the world. And she, the family left the mother country, India and sell to Mombasa and the first child was born and then she was born and then the mother fell pregnant with the third child and for whatever reason the mother for her own reason her own mental construct right needed to go back to the UK so she went to the UK she took the oldest daughter and the baby in her tummy and left my client at, at, in Mombasa with the father. And she said she's coming back and she, she took five months to come back. 
When she came back, my client never recognized her own mother. She never knew who she was. Right? That is what we call uninterrupted uninter reaching out. That would be the miscarriage, giving the child away, um, going off to boarding school. Those are interrupted reaching outs. And that's where we, re we reset the order of love and we recreate um, holism in the person, understanding what did I learn from this. So anyway, how this all plays out, the little girl, this, this client of mine remembered herself as a little girl between one and six months old, crying and crying and crying. To this day, she's had terrible, terrible lung infection. To cut a long, long story short, the whole sort of process, she said to me that she met somebody in Oxford in the UK. So, so her feeling, sorry, is rejection. Mom rejected me. And, and, and her, her whole life, she set up examples, experiences of rejection, this boyfriend, that work environment, et cetera, et cetera. There was rejection everywhere. And she kept self-edifying to her brain. You see, I'm going to be rejected. So what you do is you set it up <laughs> to, 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 to show your brain, you see, you see, they're going to reject me. You see. So she was telling me all the incidents. So then she said to me, in Oxford, she met somebody who um, accept, there was an acceptance, but she feared it so much she went away from it. This acceptance was, was she said, was the, the closest she ever felt to love. But it was so intense that she feared it. So she went away from it. And she said to me, now that you're speaking to me, she said, I can see. Because when we got to the middle of the, the um, processing and she was in the peace state and she had um, resolved, she'd handed memories back, etc. She was in a space of unconditional love. And then when we, when we talked about it afterwards, she said to me, I understand what happened. That person came to me and displayed unconditional love, complete acceptance of me. And she said, I shunned it because I feared it, because nobody had ever done that. Everybody had rejected me. And this was the complete opposite. And I said to her, you know, that's amazing. Where is this person? And she happened to be at a big center where a lot of international people were arriving. And this person arrived that morning. And I just thought, wow, what a coincidence. Just look how the circle closes and look how quick it was. Why did we arrange at that specific time to do the how treatment and that specific day, this specific incident, but it all made perfect sense to her. So I'm giving you, you know, snippets of it all to show you how there was no script we didn't know. She didn't know what was going to come up. She just started off telling me, I tried to climb the mountain today. My lungs are still sore. When it comes to lungs, you know, I just know it's sadness and grief and, you know, the, the emotion underneath, you know, is, was rejection for her. So, you know, she, she fulfilled herself. It, it was just, just amazing. So I think, and I'm very happy to, um, to set up training on this because honestly to goodness this is the way we've got to go there are so many people every single time someone sits down it's almost you just sniff it out <laughs> i can't help it anymore i just sniff it out and um and there's release instantly so i hope you've enjoyed this i, I put up a little slide just to let's share the slide and see Yes, there. That's that's my ad. Um, so it's an hour usually. I don't run by the clock. In other words, if it's an hour, I'm not going to say sorry. Time up. Let's finish next time. <laughs> we'll see it through completely. Um, and it's twelve hundred, one thousand two hundred, and I think this is this is going to be the fastest growing thing. Um, my drip clinic is the next fastest thing that's growing. And obviously my reset program, reset, restore, rejoice, re, uh, rejuvenate, rejoice.
the four phases. That's the fastest growing thing. And people are coming in from all walks of life. I don't know where <laughs> they're digging out my name, my center. And as I said to you, you know, they, they're talking amongst themselves. So I just want to end off by reminding everybody that what you set up is 100% your responsibility. Anybody who pitches, who presses a button, is there to teach you something. Allow it. Allow it to happen. Be grateful. It's not about the person or what happened. It's about what you were supposed to learn from it. And if you can get that right, my goodness. So the more people we can train, the better, obviously. And um, it's about self-discovery. My clients tell me because I say to them, why are you here? And they give me all these answers and then I just be quiet and then say yes. And, and then they say, you know, Jane, it's about knowing who I am. What's my identity? Why am I here? So we go there. And bear in mind, I've just completed my, my doctorate on a multidimensional holistic quantum well-being framework. And this is part of it, obviously. So I look forward to that, uh, to graduating there and um, sharing more and more and more with you. Thank you so much for, for being here this evening. I just want to see if there's anything more there. That's all, that's all done. And um, yeah, always an absolute pleasure to, to, to be here. And what I wanted to say is, is that um, I posted in the chat. Let me just go. I mean, yes, in the chat, I, po I posted details um, to get hold of me. Okay, and why wait? That's 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 what I'm going to end with. It's really a question of why wait. Um, thanks, guys. And as I said to you, you know, I'm only as good as you. You're only as good as me, and we're all in the classroom. So let's get there. Thanks, guys. I'll download and post. Bye.